Thank you, Jennifer. By show of hands, how many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? About 80, 90 percent. 21 years ago yesterday, September 29th, 1998, I woke up, it was six in the morning. I looked to the right and my wife wasn't in bed and I wondered where she was. So I got up to start looking for her. My, my four-year-old son, Connor, comes in and goes, where's mommy? And I said, I don't know. Let's go find her. So we walked down the hallway. My 14-year-old son, Kyle, same question. What are you guys doing? We're looking for mom. We can't find her. We walk down to the end of the hallway. We see her downstairs in front of the washer and dryer, and she's face down. It doesn't look really good. We run down there. I turn her over. Connor starts crying. I said to Kyle, go call the police, fire, medics, call whoever you can. And in about six or seven minutes, there must have been 25 people in our house. CPR, all those things, the tubes, the paddle things, and so forth. And I remember this as clear as yesterday, even though it was 21 years ago yesterday. It was clear, as, I should say, as five minutes ago. And the fireman, the medic person, comes up to me and she says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for 90 minutes. We don't have a heartbeat. Would you like us to continue? And for those of you that have been through something like this, you know that your brain kind of goes into a shock type of mode, but you can still compute a little bit. And I thought, 90 minutes, no heartbeat. And I thought about it for a second, and I looked at the medic, and I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. And she was 38 years old. Connor was four, as I mentioned, Kyle was 14. What had made it so challenging for me is I had all sorts of other tragedies that had happened in my life. My mother had passed away when I was relatively young. My parents had gotten divorced. My dad took his own life. Friends in Vietnam, car accidents and different things. And along the way, I thought, you know what? I'm going to have to find out something that's going to help me cope with life because it was pretty challenging. And needless to say, that's my title as the gratitude guy. I found gratitude. But it starts out first and foremost by how you look at something. Now, I've never been a big fan of PowerPoint. I typically don't use PowerPoint. I just like to look at people. I like to look at their faces. I'm talking to him and make eye contact every single person but it does depend on how you look at something everybody has a different view left right up down positive negative whatever it is but it's your choice every day you wake up you have a choice do you want to go left or right be positive or negative or whatever so I'd like everybody to stand up for a second and I'm going to show you something about how we look at something and what I want you to do is just always feels good to stand up when you've been sitting for an hour take your right arm extend it as high as you can start turning in a clockwise manner now, I'll tell you, in the high schools, no idea. In the junior highs, so I have to go like this. I have to kind of like show them, see, this thing? It's a watch. They're going, we're in the digital world. So here it is clockwise. So just start keeping it clockwise. Now bring it slowly down. Slowly down, bring it down, keep it going clockwise. Forehead, eyes, nose, chin, chest, waist. What direction is it going now? Anybody? Bueller? <laughs> Counterclockwise, that's right. Okay, you can sit down. Every time I do this, there's always a few people going like this, like, <laughs> what is going on? And I've actually had to explain to them, I have a book table, I sell books, as Jennifer was saying, and they come back, they what's the story on that clockwise, counterclockwise thing? And I go, it's nothing, it's going the same direction. You look at it from above and below, it just is my way of saying, if I had a glass of water, I'd say the glasses are half full or half empty, it's the same thing. But it is a choice. One of the worst ways somebody can start a sentence with me is you don't understand. Because whatever's coming, I don't want to hear. And so it's amazing. It's a choice. And as I always say, when you get up, I talk about writing a gratitude journal, which I'll get to in a minute. But it's so incredibly important. So I want to start right off with a little exercise, which is going to show you a little bit how gratitude can impact you personally. 
So you're gonna need a partner. So you're gonna have to find a partner. Most of the tables are even. There's a three by five card in the center of the table. Grab that three by five card. It says the gratitude guy on it. And there should be pens. And you might have to switch tables. I apologize if you have to switch to get a partner. So you need the pen, the three by five card, and your partner. Anybody without a partner? Okay. Okay, ready? Upper left hand corner of that three by five card, write two words. You are. Y-O-U-A-R-E. Upper left hand corner of the card. You are. Upper right hand corner of the card, write your partner's name. If you don't know them, introduce yourself, tell, you it's, tell them it's nice to meet you. Okay, last thing, lower right hand corner, sign your name or print it, whichever, and you might want to put the date on it, 9 30 19. Okay, looking for all the heads to look up. I think we're ready to roll. 60 seconds, and here's what I want you to do. Is that how much time I'm gonna put on my timer? I want you to write as many things about that person, your partner, as you can. You are energetic, you are happy, you are exciting. Whatever words that come to mind when you see that partner, write as many as you can in 60 seconds, go. About 15 seconds. And stop. I will tell you, having done this exercise many times, most of the time people are still writing, but occasionally I look down and hear somebody like this. I've written enough. <laughs> Think that's all you can say about your partner I hope they're not writing a lot about you that would be unfair <laughs> all right 60 seconds give yourself 30 seconds each read to each other what you wrote about each other go Now, we talk about learning and education and that type of thing. People learn in different ways. Some by listening, some by seeing, some by doing, and so forth. So, exchange the card so you have the card that was written about you. And even though you just heard that partner of your read, yours read all of those things, I want you to read it with your own eyes and see those words on the actual card and let them kind of sink in a little bit. I love to walk around the room sometimes and hear the, the things that people say about other people. It's fantastic. So after you've read that, you heard it, 
and then you read it. By show of hands, how many people might hold on to that card? Great. Once again, about 90%. Now, why is that? Why will we hold, hold on to that card? Because somebody else is telling you some things about you that you don't necessarily say to yourself every day. That's one of the reasons why I'm such an advocate of a, of a gratitude journal, because you're focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. My current tagline is gratitude turns what you have into enough. And I'm just amazed about why we beat the you know what out of ourselves sometimes. I used to call myself certain names, I don't anymore. And there's one name in particular I called myself, and I won't even say the word, but I'll spell it. And it was L O S E R. And I thought, are you freaking kidding me? You can't even advocate for yourself. How do you expect to get anywhere? So that's what gratitude do, because gratitude is talking about focusing on everything you have versus what you don't have, as I mentioned. So it's so very important. That is embracing gratitude, and it makes such a difference. I will tell you, as I mentioned earlier, when I asked people how many people have suffered a significant personal loss, I go from junior highs all the way up to senior centers. Junior highs amaze me, because half the kids raise their hand. Half the kids. Senior centers, everybody does, because it's obvious. But I will say in the junior uh, highs, that is, I stopped doing the three by five card exercise, unfortunately, because their average age is about 11 or 12. And there's two boys were here and he shows me the card and says, you are an idiot. <laughs> That's not the spirit of the exercise. But hang on to that card because we're going to use that again a little bit. So that's the first thing I like to talk about is embracing gratitude. Just to finish a little bit about my story, my sons are now 35 and 25 and I went ahead and raised them. My wife had passed away from a prescription pill overdose and she was 38 years old as I mentioned. And it was a tough road but gratitude has made such a really big difference. But I also mentioned it does take as long as it takes and you should never ever ever give up. I believe that was Winston Churchill. I'm fascinated by how many people throw in the towel. So whether it's a personal tragedy, a business tragedy, anything in your life that doesn't go well, you see countless examples of things when people don't give up, it seems to work out okay. Connor was four when Dana passed away and they said he needs to be assessed because he's traumatized so much by his mother's loss. So I had him to this assessment place and he's bouncing balls and doing all these exercises and things and it was so bad, the lady says he's not gonna make it in life. That was their exact words. And I had to have him go through a different kindergarten. I had to put him through first grade twice. And this wasn't looking at all good. My older son was doing okay, but not Connor. But Connor wanted to play baseball. And he just kept trying, but he never, ever played. It was so frustrating. He, we start out in coach pitch and then t-ball. And in t-ball, the ball is right there on the tee. And he's swinging the bat up here by me, way up here. And I, Connor, what are you doing? Hit the ball. So he finally lowers it, lowers it, lowers it, lowers it below the ball, hits the tee, the ball falls off, and he goes, Dad, I got a hit. And Connor, it, was, it really challenged it. That's not how baseball is played. But he kept trying, he kept trying and trying. So it went for about eight or ten years, never played. Always went to the practices, went and did the batting practice, went to the fielding exercises and so forth. And finally, on May 31st, 95, we end up going to a game and it's like all the players have, been play, have played and they're down seven to six in the bottom of the seventh inning and there's no players left. And there's a guy in second and third and two out. And so the guy, the coach looks down to the dugout and he goes, who's left out? Do we have any left to bat? We have no players. He goes, well, Brooks down here. So he says, send them out. So Connor comes out just swinging the bat like he's Ken Griffey Jr. or something. He's just like, like he's, and I, I'm, in the, I'm in the stands going like, just a bunt, something. So the pitcher pitches one ball, one ball, two strike, two, it comes up to full count. The next pitch just comes in, Connor just rips it down the third baseline, goes just inside the bag, in the left field. The guy from third comes in and scores. The guy from second rounds third, comes all the way down to the plate. Here comes the ball. The guy catches the ball, the catcher and the guy from third and the ball, they crash on top of home plate and then the ball pops out. And they win eight to seven. And guess who's standing out on second base all by himself and from second base he yells, Dad, I got a hit. <laughs> He went on to become the leading hitter at Bothell High School, a high school in northern Seattle. 
and he also was voted student of the year for his grades because he suffered in grades and it was all about never giving up and that night when we went home I told him it was never ever about baseball don't you dare give up and I will tell you if you maintain a gratitude attitude an attitude of gratitude continually focus on what you have it'll help you assist you through anything no matter how challenging your situations are I tell you it's really really worth it never ever give up it takes as long as it takes I wanted to be a speaker since I was 19 years old that was like 50 years ago and I remember one day finally thinking you know are you ever gonna do this I mean I understand it takes as long as it takes you want to be a speaker I didn't know what I was gonna speak about I just want to be a motivational speaker well you better do it one of these days so December 26th 2013 I'm managing a Lowe's home improvement I used to manage Nordstrom stores as you hear Jennifer say and so I'm managing a Lowe's store and, and I come home and it's 2 in the afternoon and Connor's now 17 and he's sitting on the couch and he looks up and he goes, what are you doing home? I said, well, I quit. And he goes, well, you quit Lowe's? I went, yeah. You quit being a store manager? I said, yeah. Well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm going to be a speaker. <laughs> he takes a breath exhales looks at me and goes well that's just super dad <laughs> he says I have a question for you what are we gonna do for food <laughs> I said Connor just believe me it's okay and it worked out okay but I just can't tell you how much and then I mentioned we'll get to it in a second the gratitude journal it makes such a big difference and when you focus on it and it's not only talking and thinking about it, but it's writing about it. You'll notice there's a three by five card there too, which we're, we wrote on the front, we're gonna write on the back. There's something about, even though the keyboards and all the things that we do, that planning in your brain, when we write something, it makes such a difference. But it does take as long as it takes, and, and whatever your journey might be, my journey happened to be a little bit later in life, but I look at people, they're my heroes, like Ray Kroc, who was 55 when he started McDonald's, or Colonel Sanders at 63 when he started KFC, J.C. Penney, there's so many different people. So it doesn't really matter when you have this color hair, it's a little different because you're a little further down the runway. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. It's never too late to pursue whatever your dream might be. I think it's very important next, embrace gratitude. It takes as long as it takes, never give up. Make room for gratitude, clear out your brain. We all know people that are really have a lot of junk in their brain. All you have to do is go to a cul-de-sac in one of these housing developments and see the two or three garages, two or three car garages rather, that are floor to ceiling boxes. They're just solid boxes. And they might have a little slice of right in the center where the person goes in to access the boxes. And I think, man, you're just eating a lot of junk in your house in that case, but in your brain, it's the same thing. And if you open your mind to pay attention to something like gratitude, it's amazing how much it can impact you. It's so incredibly important. And also, I don't know how many of you got here today in cars versus public transportation or Uber or whatever it might be, but just remember when you go out in that car and you look in that windshield and it's two feet high. You may have heard this before. It's two feet high and it's about four feet wide. And then there's the rear view mirror. It's about like this. Well, guess where most of your focus should be? In the front, where you're going. And you may want to look in the rearview mirror occasionally. If you see flashing blue lights, you may want to pull over. <laughs> I get that. But mostly pay attention to where you're going. But I think also it's really important to understand how fast can you change a habit. Uh, let me test my memory. Charlene? Charlene, right? People are so funny when I call them now in the audience. People are like, yeah. Don't, don't call on me in front of these people. But Charlie and I were talking about journaling when I was setting things up. And she was saying that I need to get back to journaling. And it doesn't matter if you fall off the horse and get back on again. But it's any of those things where how fast can you change? I've heard people say you can change in an instant. You can change in 30 days or in 21 days. There's all this different thought on how fast can you change a habit or how fast can you change something. You want to start gratitude journaling? Start tomorrow or start today. It can happen. I worked for Nordstrom's again, as you heard. And when I was working up the chain, the Nordstrom's getting to be a pretty good sized chain now. You just work and get promoted. They don't even interview you. They just pick you and you move to the next job. And so I was the suit manager. And so one day I'm in the lunchroom and this guy comes up to me and he goes, are you Dave Brooke, the suit guy in the suit department? And I went, yeah. And he goes, uh, can I tell you, my name is Steve. Can I tell you what the word is on you around here? I went, sure. And he goes, the word is you think you're really hot stuff. 
sneeze another word that has four letters and starts with S and T. <laughs> He goes, you think you're really, you got your little briefcase, you got your little shiny shoes, you got your little starch shirt, your little perfectly tied tie. And he says, nobody likes you. And he says, because you don't talk to anybody. You just kind of come and go. So I finally said a few more choice things. So I shook his hand, Steve, thank you so much. I still appreciate the guts. And I decided at that very minute, I can change that fast. And I walked out of that lunchroom door. I started saying hi to everybody in that store. And I noticed the escalators that go do that crisscross thing, they don't go any faster or go any slower if you say hi to people. And I'm hi, hi, they're way up there. Hi, hi, how are you? They're like in the third floor. Hi, how are you? That's how fast you can change. And it totally changed the perception that I had in that store and in that company. And it really, really helped me. But that's how fast you can change. Because people will tell me, and we'll get to the gratitude journal next, it's like, well, I don't know if I have time for a gratitude journal. I don't have time for this. We all know we have our own choices of the 24 hours we get to spend every day to do what we want. It's not that you don't have the time. It's not important enough. But if you see how important, that's why I like to tell some of these stories that relate to how important it was to me and how it changed me. Because I don't want to sit up here or stand up here and act like I'm teaching from some book. I live these stories. I live these tragedies, these traumas, whatever it might be. And this made a huge, huge difference. John Lennon was eight years old when he was in, I think, third grade. And the teacher was doing a little thing where she went around the room and it was like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Or what do you want to be when you grow up? So they're going around to the different kids. She gets to John Lennon. She says, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he goes, I want to be happy. And the teacher looks back at him and she goes, you don't understand the assignment. And John Lennon looks back and goes, you don't understand life. I thought that was pretty good for a little eight-year-old John Lennon. It's all about, people want to be happy. One of my books is called Happiness Starts with Gratitude. I don't know if you can be totally happy unless you're really grateful. But it does really depend a lot on how you look at things. And it's, again, it's a choice, whichever way you want to go. Gratitude journal. How many people have heard of a gratitude journal before? A few. It gets to me more and more all the time. It's simply a book where you write down what you're grateful for. I contend it takes five minutes to write in it every day. Five minutes. Sometimes you can write a few words, you can write a bunch of sentences. I fill mine up every morning for each day because it's made such a big difference. A buddy of mine, after I was, Dana had passed away, calls me one day, he wants to have a cup of coffee and he goes, you're not doing very well. And it, no kidding. You know, Dana's died and I'm dealing with Connor and Kyle as best I can. He goes, you ought to get a gratitude journal. And I will tell you, when people say you ought to, it, it's kind of something we all put this up. I do coaching and I tell people I coach, you will never hear me say you, you should, you have to, you got to, or you need to. You'll never hear those four things. If you want to be a good coach and you want to listen to people, just listen to them and ask them questions, but don't tell them what they need to be doing. But nonetheless, I got a gratitude journal. I ordered one and I started writing it and it started making a big difference. And then I developed my own, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And there's this little saying in the top I just mentioned. If you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. If you write about it, it empowers you. And there's something about, again, that writing. I am so grateful to Jennifer Adlin for inviting me down to Little Rock. It just puts it in your brain. And you can reference it later. It makes such a big difference. So. Let me just mention quickly the format here and then we're going to use those cards. So it says gratitude today on the left hand side. It says a day and date. So today would be Monday, September 30th, 2019. There's a daily number we'll get to in a second. There's two lines to have sort of what's happening, current events, special occasions. So if you don't necessarily have to have a diary or whatever. Then there's about five or six lines you write what you're grateful for. And you can do sentences, you can do bullet points, whatever it might be. And then there's two lines that say what was your highlight of your day? And that's typically, if it's morning like today, it would be yesterday. And then the right-hand side is called gratitude tomorrow or your gratitude intentions. This is something I'll go into a little more detail when I do workshops about, it's planning your brain to tell it what you're gonna be grateful for that hasn't even happened yet. And I will tell you it works. I used to write in there about, I'm so grateful to be speaking to hundreds of people. And then it was uh, 500 people. And then I said to thousands of people. And then I spoke to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis-McCord, a military base up in Seattle, south of Seattle. 
and then I would put 50,000 or 100,000. I got one of my videos went that high, and then finally, I'm so grateful to be speaking to millions of people, and one of my videos went to a million people. So it's amazing what can happen when you program your brain on making it see how gratitude can affect your life. All right, so take that three by five card if you would, the one that most of you said you're gonna keep. Now this exercise, by the way, I'm very uh, specific about this. This is just for you, there's no sharing, there's no partner, you don't have to tell anybody because there's a couple of things you're gonna write you may or may not want somebody to know. So number one, we're gonna talk about the daily number. The daily number is how you feel about your current mental state right now. One to 10, don't put it down yet, but 10 is the best, one is the worst. And then the upper left-hand corner, kind of assign your number to wherever you are right now. It might be a three, could be a 10, might be a seven, you can do halves, seven and a half, whatever it is, however you kind of take your temperature right now, whatever that is, put that in the upper left-hand corner and put a circle around it. Okay, next. You stay in the hand, Mike. So then you're going to put two, three numbers. One, two, three. On the left hand side, you're going to write three things. So just write the numbers one, two, three. Okay, number one. And remember, this is very just between you and the card and the pen. What is the number one thing you are most grateful for in your life? If you could only pick one thing, write that down at number one. <laughs> ZZ Top. Number two, what is the second thing you're most grateful for in your life? If you can only have the second thing after number one. Number three, there's always somebody in the high schools. Let me guess, the third thing you're most grateful for? No, idiot. No, I don't say that, of course. <laughs> that was what they say, I don't say that. Number three, what was the highlight of your day yesterday? What was the best thing that happened to you yesterday? takes a teeny bit longer. Okay, hopefully most everybody's done. Now, even though you just wrote those three things down, I want you to do this little exercise. I want you to reread them silently to yourself. Number one, number two, and number three. And then I want you to put another number in the upper right-hand corner. It could be the same number, it could have changed. But whatever that is, put that number in the upper right-hand corner after reading those three things and put a circle around it. Okay, by show of hands, from the upper left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner, how many people's numbers stayed the same? Okay. How many people's number went up? Fantastic, about two-thirds of the group. There's another 60-second example of what gratitude will do for you. When you focus on that, it just is amazing how it impacts you. I think there's been times in my gratitude journal when I've been a very, had a really tough day and I'm just grateful. I have a bed to sleep in and a house to sleep in and a warm shower to take in the morning. In fact, I'll tell you how much it impacted me. I had a, as if I didn't have enough other interesting things happen to me in my life, I had a mother that was manic depressive and that was before she died of cancer. And she would do something to me that as one of the five children, 
I never understood. She would call me, she'd be in one of her depressive states, and she would take a bottle of pills and she would go like this in the phone and she'd go, these are sleeping pills. You either get over and see me in the next hour or I'm gonna take all these sleeping pills. Possibly the most manipulative thing you could ever do to a son or a person or anybody. But I knew she was having one of her episodes and I'd go running over there and just try to, to talk her down and so forth. And at some point she got lithium and it was better. But what was interesting is I think I got some of that from her and I'm just not a big fan of medication after seeing what my mom, how things impacted my mom and then watching Dana die. Dana's were painkillers, Vicodin and Oxycontin. She'd gotten hooked on from a bad back uh, injury, which happens very frequently. And it just, it still comes up from time to time. I think, well, how are you gonna deal with this? And I have a, a top 10 things, if I have time I might uh, list in a minute, but to me, it's just these healthy things you have to do. And writing in a gratitude journal is one of them and getting lots of sleep and drinking water and eating good food and hanging out with positive people and things like that. Meditation, there's different things you can do. But I'll tell you, there's some days it hits, it hits me like a ton of bricks. And then one day I woke up and I was like a two. Now that you know how I equate the gratitude uh, daily num gratitude journal daily number. And I thought, man, I, and I had a talk to do that day. And I was not in a good state. So I got my gratitude journal and went to my local Starbucks and I couldn't believe it when I drove in last night at Starbucks. Yes, of course. <laughs> they started in Seattle, of course. Um, but anyway, it was, um, and I wrote my gratitude journal. It took me about five minutes. I think I even expanded a little bit more in it. It bumped me up to about a three, maybe four, four and a half, something like that. And then I drove up north of Seattle to do this talk. And it was a good size group. Actually, it was a group pretty similar to this size. And it was a big chamber of commerce. And this person comes up to me afterwards and she says, uh, you just changed my life. I had never heard that before. And I was at the book table and she's kind of crying. She says, can I give you a hug? And I said, sure. And she gives me a hug and she says, I want to get a gratitude journal for my two sons and uh, I'm going to get one for me. And, and it just meant a lot to me and especially what you, some of the things that you said. So it was really powerful. And I walked out to my car and I grabbed the rear view mirror. If you ever look at yourself in the rear mirror, it's kind of weird. It's like, who's that? You know, it's like you flip it over here. And I just started smiling. And I realized I was a nine and a half. And so I'd gone from a two to a three to a four to a nine, nine and a half. And what so many people do, I didn't take any pain meditation. I didn't take a drink. I didn't take a beer. I didn't get a joint or whatever people do. I don't quite understand all that stuff. Uh, I just made a difference in somebody's life and focus on all the goodness that I had in my life and it made that big of a difference. So that's how big a difference it can make. One day this gal comes up to me and she's seen the talk and she's buying some journals and is this your gratitude journal? Is this your own? I go, yeah. So she looks at it and it's, you know, they last about three months. So she flips through it. She goes, wow, you write in this every day. Did you just hear the talk? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I don't write in every day. I just write occasionally. I want you to write in every day. Me, I just go, I'm the gratitude guy. I go occasionally. That's how big, I was at Starbucks this morning right through that lobby for my daily entry for September 30th. And it was a big day because I was thinking about Dana's death yesterday and then speaking to you fine folks today. So uh, next thing I want to get to is find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I maintain the most relationship, important relationship you ever have in your life is yourself. Now I know there's people that are, I talk at churches, I happen to be a person of faith, and I understand that, I'm just saying that whether it's the top one or two, however you want to rank it, but that relationship is so incredibly critical. And I just mentioned about looking in the mirror, it's kind of funny sometimes, but that's the person you need to talk to. That's the person that can get you on the right track with gratitude, that's the right person that can make you see, I'm gonna read that card every day, or keep that card that we did at the exercise, or whatever, to keep you with the right mindset. Whether it's procurement, it doesn't matter what it is, your personal life, your business life, if you have a better relationship with that person in the mirror, everything goes better, everything works better. In fact, I look at sometimes human behavior, managing all these people at, at Nordstrom and Lowe's, I go back to looking at all those, just the individuals, and 90% of the bad behavior went back to people who didn't have a good self-esteem, didn't have good self-confidence, and they're acting out and doing things. So it can make such a big difference. But I think that, again, that relationship you have with yourself was so important. I, I was down in um, Reno, and a buddy of mine, this was some years ago, and he was at the slot machine because all the quarters come down. And we're playing and, and just we're going to play some cards. We to go see a show or something. And all of a sudden he puts a quarter in and a thousand dollars comes down. It's all the quarters and they're just crashing down. 
and he's like going like this, Brooker, this is incredible. And I'm like a little ways away and I come over and I kind of stand by him as it's going down. He goes, this is just, isn't this fantastic? And I go, yeah, it's great. It's fantastic because I'm buying dinner. I went, super. And as I'm sitting there, I just thought privately to myself, you know, I'm really excited for him. I'd be just a teeny bit more excited if it was me. <laughs> and people could kind of go, oh, what kind of friend are you? Oh, oh, tell me you wouldn't be the same way. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm just being honest, but it has to do with how you see yourself. So when you look in that mirror, how do you see yourself as that one-on-one -on -one relationship? Here's a $20 bill. Andrew Jackson. Now, if I just walked out here in the audience and just gave you a $20 bill, no strings attached, would most people take it? Would we, can we assume that? Yes. Yeah. You can. Who said that? You did? You did. Thank you for participating. Well, you're the guy that likes to talk. Yes, sir. Which, you're up here. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So if I do this, would you still take it? Yes, sure. Yeah. And how about putting it on the ground, stomping on it, smoothing it out, making it look nice and somewhat flat again. Would you still take it? Yes, yeah. What's your name? Uh, Billy. Blanton. Billy. Thank you, Billy. I can hear you above all the crowd. That's, I like that. Well, if I look at Andrew Jackson and I go, you know what, Andrew Jackson? You're a piece of crap. You're worthless. And you're full of baloney. And frankly, you don't even deserve to be on this earth. Andrew Jackson would look back at me and he would say, well, that's just super, Mr. Speaker Man, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. <laughs> and he would be right. So why do we let somebody crush us, step on us, tell us we don't deserve to be here or that we're full of baloney, or worst of all, devalue us from 20 to 15 to 10 to 5 to the worst of all zero and let them get away with it? I will submit to you again. Mr. Billy, can you come up from the snack? I will submit to you again. Gratitude is the best Teflon, the best armor you can ever get. There you go for being the good participant. <laughs> I talk about Teflon. I talk about being a coat of armor. It's incredible what can happen when you do this. Now, there'll be some people that'll buy my gratitude journal. There's some people that'll get a spiral notebook and then there'll be some people that just won't do anything, which I'm fine with. But it's interesting though, I have this group of fraternity brothers who went to school at the University of Washington. And we get together about once a month and, and a lot of them, they're the ones that gave me this name, The Brooker. I got that in college. And they will call me, I need a dose of The Brooker. You know, you're a motivational speaker after all. That's why I'm calling you. And I go, well, um, I am a motivational speaker. Let me ask you this, do you have a gratitude journal? Yeah, I remember you gave me one. Did you write in it today? No. So then they hang up on him. <laughs> I, I, just, I just pressed the button. I just pressed the thing. And then they call back. I think we got cut off. Bad connection. I go, no, it was a good connection. I just hung up on you. This is, I mean, this, these are one of the tools. I will be your training wheels, but I'm not going to pedal your bike. I can help you, but you got to do the work yourself. And this is no different. And I tell people, just give this a try. And for anybody that tries this too, I'm even sort of backed off. I mean, I haven't missed a day writing this in 10 years and I have a whole slew of them now because they last about three or four months. But I'm even nice enough now to say to people, just put a couple of words down every day. Just what you're grateful for. And maybe some of those same words that you put on the back of that card that makes such a big difference. So, and it's such an interesting thing too because I talk about getting organized and time management and other things when I get into further work, uh, workshops. But I will tell you, that card, if you ever have a tough time sleeping at 3 in the morning, a lot of people I know take that card that said they wanted to keep it, they put it on their refrigerator, they put it on their computer, they put it on their bulletin board, they put it in different places. But I tell people it's also not a bad card to put by your bed on the nightstand so when you wake up at 2 or 3 and you can't sleep and you look at the front and back of that card, sometimes they'll help you get to sleep a lot better just because you're focusing on what you have. So. A couple more things I want to talk about around that and then I'll get to our sharing gratitude and this top 10 formula that I had. I think it's so important to learn to listen. So I'm going to test my memory. So Charlene, it was Charlene, correct? And then where's Anne? 
Where's Anne? She said hi to me this morning. She already left, didn't like the presentation. <laughs> How about Steven? And they said they were gonna be here. Oh, that's working out really well. <laughs> I know Jennifer. And I know Billy. It's Billy, right? I think it's so important to really be a good listener. And I think for, again, from my age, I noticed from the generation that I came from, there was Johnny Carson for 30 years. If you go back and watch any of the old Johnny Carson stuff, the TV's uh, night, uh, Tonight Show, he never talked about himself. He would just ask all those questions and have all these really cool guests and things. But he very, and even if somebody asked him a question, he'd deflect it back to them. And I tell people, if you ever want to be the most popular person in the room, I went down to meet Jennifer last night and then I met Chris. Where's Chris? Chris Clifford, right? Nice to meet you. My name is David Kathy. That's yeah. exactly. I was telling you, I'd be sure to remember. That's so impressive. Not really. But the thing is, is that when you pay attention and you ask good questions, people will think you're their best friend. And we don't do a good enough job of listening. There was a comment about, uh, or a story about two people, that, two guys that got on an airplane and they flew from LA to New York. And they get to New York and the two wives pick them up. And the wife of the guy that talked the whole way, she says, how was your flight? And she go, he goes, oh, I met the nicest guy. Of course she met the nicest guy because he just listened the entire time and never said a word. So I think about it, but I will tell you, remember these two three-word phrases. There's two three-word phrases if you want to be the best, most popular person at the party or work or anywhere else is tell me more is one of them. Don't start talking about yourself. Tell me more. Well, we did this. I went down for the TOAL conference. And whatever they said, yeah, tell me more. Oh, it was fantastic. There's a really good speaker called the Gratitude Guy. Tell me more. You know, it's like whatever it is, tell me more. And the other one is, and then what? If you use those two terms, tell me more and then what, you will have so many friends, you won't know to any of them. It's just, it's fascinating to me. I just get a kick out of how, tough, how often that happens. Ten word formula. Um, this is my first time. Um, so I came up with this. I'm just going to read this so you don't have to write it down, but I just think it's interesting. I get this asked a lot. All right, Mr. Gratitude Guy, you've done the gratitude thing. What's kind of some of your formulas for things that are good? Not everybody agrees with me. I get it. But what's worked for me, uh, exercise daily, get your sleep. These are things we've heard before. Uh, don't drink or smoke or do drugs. I know that people that I go to senior centers and sometimes I get 95-year-old people and I'll ask them, what's your best advice for somebody that's growing up or their age or our age or wherever they are, would you like to know at 95 that you could have known at 18? And invariably, one of the most common comments is everything in moderation. And so I think that's whether you can drink, have it, just don't drink a ton, take your vitamins, write in your gratitude journal, meditation I mentioned, drink lots of water, take in less calories than you use, hang out with positive people, I've had some great friends that have become acquaintances because I'm not going to hang out with them anymore. It's just too much of a negative thing. My father, as I mentioned very, very briefly, took his own life. I'd say to him, good morning, Dad. And he'd go, what's good about it? And once we were having coffee, a couple years before he, he died, and I said, I've never seen anybody who complains as much as you do. All you do is complain. And he said, did it ever occur to you I just might like to complain. And I just sat there, I think I was mid 20s, and I said, never occurred to you, I may not want to hang out with you then. I mean, why do you want to hang out, even though it's my own father, why do you want to hang out with somebody who's going to be so negative? So, really, really important. So, I mentioned uh, remembering names too. That's something else I'd like to touch on because you're helping people. If you're going to share gratitude and, and spread the word, and it helps you if you remember people, I, I always use a couple of techniques. First thing is, you heard this before probably, use the name as quick as you can. Say it again, Kathy, not Chris. <laughs> Charlene, and I saw Steven in the lobby last night. He said he was coming to the, that's why I remember him. And Anne, and I saw Anne this morning. Um, but it's, it's interesting, it's how it gets planted in your brain. And the other thing is, is use name association. And when I first, I had met Jennifer before, but when my first Jennifer for her to remember her was Aniston. And if you pick a famous person or anybody, the first one that comes to your mind, it'll really, really help you. So, 
So, oh, and then this is what I wanted to mention too, and then I'll get into a couple more things and we'll wrap up sharing gratitude. Top 10, excuse me, top seven traits of procurement professionals. I thought this was really cool. This, these are the ones that are really successful. People person, which is not surprising. Likes metrics, which is all about keeping score in so many ways. Uh, negotiator by nature. I've never been as big a negotiator, but I think that's a key thing in the procurement world. Uh, unconventional thinker. I thought that was kind of neat, looking for different ways to do things. Generates processes, if they're not happy with the ones that they see. And then curious, and then tactical. In our neck of the woods, the Gates family is very well known because Bill Gates started Microsoft. And his father has been interviewed many times about did you, what did you see in young Bill as he was coming up. And Bill passed his father and everybody else and became the richest guy in the world. And he said that his, his father said he'd never met a person, anybody, including his own son, anybody he ever met that was as curious as Bill Jr. was. And it was the curiosity that really helped him. In fact, a little trivia up in our neck of the woods, there's a suburb of Seattle to the east called Bellevue, and there's a suburb within, or a section within Bellevue that's called Medina, and that's where all the rich people live. And Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos are the two richest guys in the world, one and two or two and one, and they live five houses apart on the same street, which I think is kind of funny. So, okay, a couple more things. There's a little card you'll see right here. And I put this down there, and, and every Monday, it went out today at 4 o'clock. Grab your cell phones, by the way, because you're going to use your cell phones in just a second. Every Monday, I send out a one-minute video to get your week started off with a, uh, a little video message around gratitude. My sister saw one of my messages the other day, and she says, I sure like your messages. And she says, they all seem to have something to do with gratitude. And I go, seriously? <laughs> You're, you're wondering, is that like a coincidence or something? So, and one, a couple of these cards are wrong, but if you're interested in getting that one minute video, it goes out at four o'clock my time on the West Coast, uh, just text GRATEFUL to 42828. So it's 42828 is what you text to, and the word you text is GRATEFUL. And it'll ask you for your email, and it'll get you signed up so you can get that. But a lot of people really like that, because it's, uh, it's a neat way to start your grateful to 42828 and also as long as I'm at it on that card I put some business cards on there too anybody that uh, has got somebody that has a speaking opportunity or is interested in coaching I'm always interested in talking to if your organization needs to talk I'm happy to do that too all right I was at the book table one day. Actually, no, I beg your pardon, I was up front. And if it's a smaller group, I collect business cards and then I hand out a free book. You know, and so it was really neat. And I was kind of telling, well, this is what I do. I do this and I have my one minute, min my one minute, uh, Monday morning minute, I call it, three M's. So I collect the business cards. And again, it was a similar room to this. There was a lot of business cards. And so the gal, you know, they picked the name Sally Smith and she's like in the back and she comes up and you know I'm standing on the stage and yay Sally and they're all clapping for her so I, I give her the book and she starts to walk back to her seat and as she's walking back I said you know if you'd like later I'll sign that she goes that's okay <laughs> I, I will never get too big for my britches last thing I'm going to talk about is sharing gratitude embracing gratitude it takes as long as it takes don't ever give up make room for gratitude clear out your brain Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. Get a gratitude journal. I can't recommend them highly enough. And finally, sharing gratitude. People that find something they're excited about like to share it. And it's something that is just, you just get fulfilled. It's just, wow, you're the person that told me to buy this book. You're the person that told me about this restaurant or whatever. They want to share it. So sharing gratitude is so very important. And it's just, again, more fulfilling. So uh, everybody got your smartphones? We're going to do a little exercise now called uh, the four T's, as in the letter T. Text, tweet, telephone, or tell. And I will tell you right now, most people are going to text. 
So what I'd like you to do, and if you don't have a smartphone, you can borrow one of the little cards, or take one of the cards rather, on the table if there's ones left, and write a note to somebody. I want you, I'll give you 60 seconds, and I want you to text somebody in your life, and I want you to use the word grateful, and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. Go, 60 seconds. Okay, and stop. Once again, you can imagine the senior centers. I go, I'll give you five minutes <laughs> to text um, somebody you're grateful for in your life. They, Thank you. you know, and then in the, in the junior highs, I give them six, you know, 60 seconds. And they've done about like 15 texts. I've never seen fingers move so fast. But I love this exercise because of what happens and do we show our gratitude enough do I, did I tell Jennifer thank you enough times for inviting me? I mean, is it, can you ever do that too much? I was at a uh, performing arts center where the stage went up and, and there was a lady, she was actually using the phone. Most people, as I said, text, and she was right about where that chair is right there. So I could hear her and she's talking and we're just, I'm just getting ready to wrap up and she goes, yes, honey, I just wanna let you know how grateful I am. She was using the word, thank you. Grateful, and I, I'm assuming her husband. And I just love you so much, I just appreciate and I just, what, I don't know, some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> it's supposed to be your idea. <laughs> and then people will, they'll come up and they'll, we all have our smartphones and they'll show me, look at my answer. And here's one that says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And then the other day was, um, oh, I know, are you sure you sent me that this is the right person? <laughs> but I will tell you, I'm such a proponent of gratitude. And again, it doesn't matter your personal, your professional life, what you do, procurement, it, it could be anything. And, and I'm so, I feel so fortunate to get to talk to a lot of people and tell them how, what a powerful mindset this can be, an attitude of gratitude. And it really, really reinforces Folks and everything you have versus what you don't have. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. It makes such a difference. But there's still something about sharing it that's so powerful. Had years ago, I was always, I didn't do the drugs and all that kind of stuff, but I always was a uh, daredevil. So I was skydiving and scuba diving and paragliding and, and all these different things. I raced a hydroplane for a while, did all these different things. But once I set up this skydiving uh, group of 10, my fraternity brothers, and you know, it's like on Saturday, and I sit, made the reservation on Saturday, and it's like Monday, and I get a call, a couple of them have canceled. Then on Tuesday, I get a call from a couple more, and it's like, <laughs> I go, let me guess, you have a sore throat. How, how could you tell I can't make it on Saturday? Chicken. You know, it's like, so finally, I get to the skydiving place on Saturday, and I walk up proudly, and he goes, can I help you? And I said, uh, yeah, I have a reservation at 10 o'clock, and he goes, for Brooke? And I go, yeah, and he looks at me, he looks on either side and he goes, where are all your friends? And I went, uh, I don't have any. Nobody showed up. <laughs> so I went by myself and I got the picture. Anybody skydive here? A few. So you know, 
and this, this was before I did the, the free fall later, but this was the static line. And I'm like, oh, there's a picture and I'm all scared and everything. And, but what was so sad is I get the little certificate and I get down there and I go to my car and there's nobody to talk to. And so I'm talking to myself. I'm going, I'm so proud of you. Good going. And then somebody's looking at me, what's with the weirdo? Looks like a homeless guy. He's talking to himself. And what's up with that? And, but there's nobody to share it with. And I think that was even before cell phones. I had to like go to a pay phone or something. So anytime you find something that you can then, in fact, share, it makes your relationships with those people, family, friends, coworkers, whatever it is, so much more fulfilling. But I will tell you, if you give gratitude a try, if you take an attitude of gratitude, it can transform your life. It can make a huge difference in your life. I feel in my case, it saved my life. I'm really not sure I would have been here if it wasn't for what gratitude did for me. Thanks a lot.